In this final chapter, we will create jade stones and place them onto our decimated pendant mesh using 3ds Max's Select and Place tool. Next, we will use our ZBrush created cavity, peaks, and valley mask to layer dirt onto metal using a V-Ray blend material. The tutorial will conclude with us creating a final render of our pendant in V-Ray, followed by closing notes linking other free tutorials I have made, as well as some new classes I am currently working on. Alright, so back in Max, we just need to import our uh, mesh, our highly tessellated decimated mesh. I'm just ignoring some of these things that are in here. Um, let's go ahead and center the pivot on this. I'm going to right click, hide unselected. And then now you can see in here, we have the nice mesh in here. And it should have all of our UVs, all the good stuff. So before we add our masks and different things, the other thing that we need to do too is remember we need to add a gemstone in here. So, or like a jade in this case, I think that's what we have here. It's kind of like a, a nice um, jade material. So I'm gonna make a box. I'm just gonna hold down on the control key. And I wanna make sure each of these is the same. So I'm just gonna do a numerical setting, scale this up just a bit, and then I'm gonna give this a turbo smooth. The reason I'm doing this is I like to get really clean topology, and that happens if you have a box that you start with, and then you just do a nice setting here. So let's go ahead and delete the bottom of this. Let's grab the border here, and non-uniform scale it so that it's flat, and then uh, since we're in border mode, let's go ahead and cap that too. So now we have this capped. And let's non-uniform, oops, sorry. Let's, um, yep, cool. Let's non-uniform scale this down so it feels like we have these pieces kind of setting low. And let's make sure we have the pivot point centered and actually lowered just a bit. Let's set it right at the bottom because of this one tool I'm going to do. I want to make sure that we can have this pivot point here. Let's do a reset X form on this portion and then right click collapse to and then now we have a nice uh, gemstone. So this tool up here is really awesome. Select and place tool. Um, now you can just click and then you drag this and it works on any of your uh, normals here. So and this this is moving based on uh, where I set my pivot point, but you can do it set by um, other things as well. Use base as pivot, um, pillow mode, different things. So just play around with these settings and you can get something else going on. But for our purposes, I'm just going to set this in here and then I can switch to uh, scale mode and just scale this up to kind of fit in. And then if you just hit hold down on shift or go back in this mode and you hit shift and then you drag, um, you can make a copy of it. In some cases it fits right away. Shift to drag. This one obviously we need to scale a little bit. Love this tool. Love it, love it, love it. I was actually at Seagraph two years ago up in Vancouver and um, there was a really awesome V-Ray presentation by IKEA and it was funny I was sitting there thinking oh, maybe I should skip this one. It won't be that interesting but it was actually probably one of the most impressive um, things I saw when I was at Seagraph. Uh, Sorry, I'm changing uh, my pivot point to local here so I can pull this out a bit. And the reason I'm bringing that up is um, IKEA, for all the stuff they do, I don't know, like all, all their catalogs are pretty much 80-90% all V-Ray renders. And they use 3D Studio Max all the time. Um, so they basically developed this tool this place and select tool. And if what I understand is correct, um, they're just like, hey, Max, we'll like give you this tool for free. Just incorporate it into your next version so that we don't have to uh, keep setting it up ourselves. And they had a number of other awesome tools that I was like, why didn't you give them those too? And they're like, yeah, we'll keep those for ourselves. But this one is just amazing. For those of you who use ZBrush, it's similar to that IMM tool.
Let's do one final one down here. Scale that up just a bit more. I'm going to select all of those actually. And then I'm going to link them up here with this select and link tool. Oops, wrong way. Select and link to our piece here, and that way we can move this around and they'll stick together. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do too is just add a turbo smooth on top of those. All right, so let's change these colors just so they're a little bit more representative of what the actual renders will be like. Uh, these little guys will be like jade. And then now we can go ahead and kind of start messing with our materials. So one thing that you're going to see here is um, basically since this was for a V-Ray demo, I'm not going to break down all the material settings and things like that for you guys because I'm actually going to be showing those in a uh, tutorial uh, a little later on that you'll be able to buy online. Um, that's kind of based off of this image that I've done here. It'll show you how to create step-by-step -step, like all these materials that we're essentially using in this demo. So keep an eye out for that. I think probably in about a month or so I should have that out, maybe the end of September. It might be longer depending on um, wherever I have to release it from. But basically I'm just taking some of the materials that I have from there, including this material, um, which is uh, from the cauldron that you saw right here. And we're just going to use that for our necklace as well. So what it is basically is a V-Ray blend material and it has a dirt material on top and then uh, that dirt material which creates these dark areas here sits right on top of our cauldron which is the cauldron metal from that image you saw a minute ago. And those mix through based on all those maps that we used and uh, were created out of ZBrush. So over here this is my blend map. If we look at it right now you can see this has um, one of our mask versions in here. I just need to make sure this is updated to ours. I think ours is in folder D so we want to make sure we get the dirt one. And you probably see this update in a second. Yep, moves to a different location, so we did need to update that. And then now let's go to our metal material here. And what I've done down here in the reflect area is I've actually made an area that's brighter. So you can see in here, see how this goes a little brighter? That's our peaks and valleys mask that came out of uh, ZBrush. We just need to get the most recent one that's for the UVs on this piece. So down here, let's click that. And sorry, you won't be able to follow step by step and make this, but um, like I said, uh, you know, just keep your eyes out for those tutorials later, and I'll show you how to make those if you want to check them out. But now you can kind of see how these sit in here. Look how this is just perfect. See how it's bright here, and then it's dark on top. This will really uh, show off our sculpting really nicely. And then uh, let's just attach that, and then. We need to select our jade areas. So I already have a jade material here that I made last night. Assign that. This one was pretty fun. Uh, I actually just looked online for a nice tutorial. Uh, let's see here. Here it is. Um, yeah, so I just looked up this tutorial. If you guys feel like searching this up, you can. I think honestly, I just look like for V-Ray jade material. Let's just check it out. V-Ray. Jade material tutorial. I bet we can find it in here. Uh, here we go. This is at the Turbo Tips V Ray soft material. Anyways, um, yeah, this one was great. It shows you exactly what to do in order to make the uh, jade material. It even gives you some nice maps in here that you can use. So, if you guys want to make at least that jade one, you can go through here and follow that and make it because that's what I used, and it turned out pretty good. So anyways, let's go back into Max. We have all these assigned now, I believe. Uh, yep, all that stuff's on here. And um, I actually already have a bunch of different lights and different things set up as well. And the lights that I have in this scene is like an HDRI map that's attached to a dome light and then just an area light. And both of these I was actually using as well for this piece. So my area light, I think, was shining a rainbow type color in here and then my uh, HDRI map was just something that came from uh, an online website that I found. And then the cameras here, obviously we need to be able to move those around. Uh, so let's go ahead and look through our V-Ray camera. I'm pressing Shift F to frame this a bit. And let's move our piece in here. And 
let's take a look here at my render setup. I already have this set up and I'm sorry I'm not going to go through and explain every little thing right now again because I will be showing this later and those other tutorials you'll be able to check out online um, but for now I'm just going to make sure that I have this set to a low setting and then I believe I have this on a progressive renderer. So progressive rendering was something new that was introduced with V-Ray 3.0 just really really useful. Uh, this is set to uh, a 1K render right now. It's kind of big for this screen, so let's uh, let's cancel that and make it a little bit smaller. Let's change this to let's call it 800 by 800. Okay, I think that should fit our screen a little better. Let's try that again. Okay, cool. In the progressive render, right now what you can see is a calculation phase for a radiance map. Um, and then you see it, it's actually starting to render now. And everything's starting to show up the way I expected. We have the nice dirt map that's working here on the bottom. And then nice little edge highlights here. And for those of you who watched my Noman DVD back in the day for my unmystified thing, I was using a, uh, a different type of edge and dirt map mix thing called a tension modifier. And, it's a little tricky to explain, so this is like super easy mode um, for those of you that want to learn how to do this. So already you can see that this works out pretty nicely. We get a nice render here. Let's cancel this one. So here you go. You know, it's looking good, but let's see what our jade looks like. Let's rotate that and let's do another render. I'm actually going to cancel this and let's just pick out one little section here. And this way we can just get this to render a little bit faster for you guys. And let's see what that looks like. So it's just taking a little time to progressively render, and the reason why is we have this subsurface that's working on uh, this piece here, so it takes a bit of time. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to cancel this, um, and I'm going to turn this off. Let's change this to about twice the size. Let's turn on this lock here, 1600 by 1600. Let's do another full render, and let's cancel this again. And we will go here to region mode. And what I'm going to do is just a nice high quality render of um, this section here so you can see what it looks like without noise. So I'm going to do that by coming back to our V-Ray settings. I'm going to change this to fixed GI. Uh, let's change this to like a medium, something like that. Now we'll turn this back on. We can zoom in here, we can tell where we're 100%. Now we're doing like this kind of scan line render. And up here as it goes through, you can see we have really nice clear resolution as it goes through. And the moment it gets here to this jade, I'm guessing that it's gonna start chugging a bit. I think my voice is starting to go a little hoarse here from all the talking I've been doing. Let's go ahead and uh, speed up the camera so that we'll have this come through really fast. All right, so here we go, it's complete. And um, you can see here, uh, even that square that we had earlier that turned into a box that already had some nice UV mapping on it. So we get that nice jade surface and then we get the nice edge highlights going on here and yeah we have a pretty good piece and uh, whenever you're done with this if you were to do a turntable you get something that you know kind of looks like this and yeah I guess that about does it um, for those of you that aren't already familiar with my page well I assume you are so otherwise you probably wouldn't be seeing this but feel free to uh, check through my webpage I, I got a lot of different stuff in here um, I've been adding a lot of my uh, personal and professional artworks. You can see just tons of different things in here, even sometimes some silly drawings that I do. And some of the stuff I used to do, like Square Enix and whatnot when I was working on like uh, 
Final Fantasy Advent Children and some other movies. So I look forward to uh, kind of showing you guys some more stuff in the future. I'm always putting up like mini tutorials up here and I do have some big ones that are coming soon that uh, you will be able to buy and um, otherwise definitely check out some of the little ones that I have on here for free all the time and please be sure to come back and check out my site so you can see more cool stuff. And one of the classes that I'm really excited about showing you guys is how uh, to make this Viking shield in armor. So that's a pretty big one. It's got over nine hours of uh, footage and um, that'll be available probably in the middle of September. I'm hoping if everything goes right. So please come back and check that out. In the meantime, um, hope you guys learned something valuable here and it was fun teaching. Talk to you soon.